Hello guys and welcome. Welcome to Minecraft's Hell, the Nether. A lot of adventurers met a really bad fate in here and never came back. However, those adventurers that came back from the Nether, they came back with riches. The Nether is indeed a fascinating dimension and it is dangerous, it is challenging, but it can be done. However, the Nether is not as bad as you would assume. There are also some good things about it and today I will show you that the Nether can also be a really really great place. First of all, you don't need to sleep in the Nether. In the overworld, while you are exploring and adventuring, sometimes while you are building it turns night and a lot of hostile mobs will spawn. In the nether it's not the case, you don't need to sleep. And there are no annoying phantoms that chase you if you don't sleep. Like this happens to me quite a lot, like I'm exploring the overworld and I suddenly don't find my base for example or I went too far because I wanted to collect some wood or find some animals and it's suddenly night and just hostile stuff keeps spawning around me like skeletons, zombies and those annoying creepers that constantly seem to chase me. And yeah, you don't have this issue in the nether. I mean, you do have hostile mobs that spawn in the nether from time to time, but it doesn't matter if it's uh, night or day and the rate is not as high as it is in the overworld at night. And just look at that, like a skeleton just appeared and there's like much more stuff appearing. It just turned night. And yeah, it can be quite challenging because you always need to interrupt and you need to also sleep because if you don't sleep for three days in the overworld, you will be chased by those annoying and strong phantoms and in the nether it doesn't matter if you don't sleep for even five, six, seven days, there's no phantom spawning and there are biomes where there's no hostile mobs like the warp forest for example and even the nether ways are actually quite peaceful because those piglins they don't attack you unless you attack them. And yeah, to always interrupt like projects and adventures with sleeping can be really annoying. You don't have this in the nether, so it's definitely one of my most favorite things about the nether. <laughs> now it's daytime, burn skeleton. What's also really cool about the nether is there are really unique mobs like those zombie fight piglings. There's also a live piglins version that you can actually trade with. If you throw them some, some gold, they will actually give you something in return it can be anything it can be obsidian it can be like arrows and i think you can even get some string yes you can also get some string and make a bow so if you ever start in the nether you can actually get tools and stuff from them they also give you irons from time to time so look he's about to throw something at me however the piglins are really scared of their zombie version and yeah we have crying obsidian some nether bricks and string and spectral arrows but they're really afraid of the zombie white version of them. But hey, who wouldn't be uh, terrified by their own image as a zombie, right? Like, that's just so understandable that you're afraid of this zombie fight version of yourself. Number three, the nether has really, really fascinating biomes like this crimson forest right here. This is one of the fungi forests in the nether. There's also a blue version of that called the warp forest. And this just makes you feel like you're on a whole different planet. <laughs> like, this is so magical. Not only do you have those giant fungi, but you also have those nether warts uh, grow, grow on the ground. You have those weeping vines, you have hoglins uh, spawn from time to time and piglins that you can trade with. This one's a bit more dangerous, but it's full of resources and you can have like an infinite amount of pork chops actually. <laughs> And yeah, there's also a blue version of this, the warp forest. And this one is the most peaceful ones. There are no hostile mobs spawning here. I mean, you do get sometimes hostile mobs from the border of this biome because they can walk into it. But if you're like in the center of this biome, you're pretty safe and you can set up a base here. And you could literally live in the nether and be at peace. And even if you don't sleep, there's no problem because you won't get attacked here. However, there are sometimes endermen spawning, so you better be careful not to look into their eyes like this enderman down here. That's the only kind of challenge you have and I find this sometimes annoying, but it's a beautiful biome and to work with that wood, that warped wood from those fungi, it's just beautiful for builds. I've built some incredible buildings with that. Yeah, and there are also some other biomes that are like more dangerous, like the Soul Sand Valley here, for example. There's some blue fire here. It looks really, really interesting. However, once you walk on that sand, you become slow and there are a lot of skeletons spawning here in gas, so it's very, very challenging. But what I find even more challenging and dangerous is the basalt deltas. 
Not only is it really dangerous to walk through here, but you also have constantly those magma cubes spawning that can be really annoying and once you take a wrong step you can fall very very deep and there are tons of smaller lava lakes that you sometimes miss out while walking and yeah this could be your last step so it's very dangerous here. Number four, we have those really really interesting nether fortresses and nether bastions and they are also really 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 great to explore. Not only are those structures really really large, there are also tons of chests and treasures in here. You can find a lot of really really cool stuff here. You can also find some nether wards, you can find some, some diamonds, some horse armor saddles. It's definitely very 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 useful and be careful though, there are some wither skeletons like the black skeleton version basically and they can hit really really hard so you have to be really really careful while exploring here you also have a blazes spawn here and they're pretty pretty strong so you have to be really really careful i always suggest to bring at least a shield and some decent gear like this blaze right here however they drop blaze rods what are really really good because you need them to actually beat the game to make those ender eyes and yeah, here we found some diamond horse armor and some, some regular gold, what is really, really great. And yeah, there are a lot of chests. I guess I was lucky here with this spawn, that's why we have so many diamonds. And as you guys can see, there are quite a lot of blazes. Sometimes there are also blaze spawners, and if you find a blaze spawner, that's a jackpot, because you can have an infinite amount of blaze rods, and not only can you make brewing stands with that, but you can make a lot of potions with that, and some really, really good potions. But yeah, be really careful here. They're very, 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 very strong mobs. Luckily, we didn't meet a wither skeleton yet. And yeah, there are also those blaze spawners that I talked about. And they are very, very, very cool for setting up some blaze rod farms. And they're really challenging though. So make sure you have, you have good gear for them or even a bow. It's actually easy to take those out with a bow. And the amount of blaze rods you can farm at the spawner is just insane. Sometimes I camp here with a really strong enchanted bow and I just one and two shot those thingies down and collect those blaze rods. It's definitely very very important to have this also so you can beat the ender dragon and reach the end because because you will you will need that to make those ender eyes right. Like ender pearls are not enough and ouch we are burning. Yeah make sure you have proper gear otherwise it's almost pointless to farm this. They're very very difficult to deal with. And don't take a wrong step here. <laughs> it's also easy to fall through here. Number five, there's like a lot of interesting land generation. We have like floating islands here. Like a lot of stuff is here vertical. You have like multiple layers of like multiple floors here, you could say. And it's just incredible to build here. Like you can actually build a flying base. Like here in this example, for example, I built a flying small side base and it looks interesting, right? Because we have this like floating island with like a small house here. And you can do like some really, really, really cool builds with the generation here in the nether. Like look at this. We are literally living on a flying island with a bridge and even have some bees here. So yeah, it's really, really interesting. You can also make like a insane roller coaster here. I've seen one of my friends build a crazy roller coaster through the nether. And that's so easy because of the generation like... Things are not flat here. It's very vertical and it's very interesting how it generates here. You can even have a ladder that leads from one layer to another. And yeah, this bed is just for show. Like, don't click on this. Beds will explode in the nether. And yeah, you can make like a small hell vacation home here, basically. <laughs> no, it's really funny. No, seriously, you can make really cool stuff there. You could even use like one of those uh, layers or, or levels here and actually fill this completely up with a wall and have like a, a little home there for example. Like here this for example, if we wanted to, or maybe like a, a smaller one, we could actually patch this whole thing up and make some kind of cave-like home here. Like this one for example has a good height. You could turn this into, into a base without a roof, but one that has like maybe a ladder that leads to another floor. You can even make a, a lava lake base here, like on the lava you can live there. I know it's gonna be probably really hot and you're gonna sweat a lot at night, but... <laughs> but there are some biomes that I wouldn't build in like the soul sand valley, because it's just so annoying to build here and you will maybe have some skeletons spawn inside your house and you have constantly gusts when you leave your, your door, so... You should, you should pick the right biome, I always go for either the, the fungi biomes, 
or the nether waste but don't go for the soul sand valley and also don't go for the basalt deltas they're just horrible to build a base in it can be done but it's very annoying so yeah as you guys can see even more flying islands it's just so incredible how land generates here and you have tons of gigantic caves here or or layers like it's really interesting it's pretty bright here maybe you don't need even torches for your base oh wow i've built quite a lot of projects already in the nether and i love it i keep coming back here it's definitely a worth experience anyway guys that's it for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed this one please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't that would really 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 mean a lot and please don't forget to like this video hit that notification bell so you don't miss out any new video and my opinion the nether is a beautiful place to explore and live in it can be more challenging so it's not always easy for for the beginner in minecraft or the new player but if you already have played Minecraft for a bit, try out the nether, maybe find some cool project that you like, build a second base here, make it a home and explore. I wish everyone a wonderful day. I will see you guys next time.